Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in today's video I'm going to be going over all of the new systems and currencies you'll be seeing in the Shadowlands expansion. I've seen a lot of confusion and misinformation floating around online, so I've compiled all of the available information and looked at a bunch of the content on the beta for you guys here. Quick reminder before jumping into the video that the Shadowlands giveaway we're doing is running until October 16th, so check out the gleam.io link in the description for that for your chance to win. Now let's jump straight into it, starting at the beginning with leveling. Unlike in BFA and in Legion, there is now a linear story, so players do not get to choose where they start. All players will first start in Bastion, then move on to Maldraxxus, then Ardenweald, and finally Revendreth. You also must complete the main story in each zone in order to advance at level 60, so make sure you're doing that. For alt, it's a bit of a different story as they get this option called the Threads of Fate. Basically, this is kind of similar to the Diablo Adventure mode, where at level 50, when your alt comes into the Shadowlands, you have a choice. You can either choose to repeat the main story, as you did on your first character, or you can instead choose to immediately select your covenant and be thrown into this world where the main story is completed. But you do have access to things like world quests, objective areas, and then this zone-wide quest you can pick up, which is kind of like a fill-the-bar quest, where it's completed by killing various mobs, doing side quests, or finishing dungeons in the zone. And at the end of that, you'll get a bunch of gear and be able to select another zone-wide quest for a different zone. Once you've hit level 60 and have completed the entire main story, you will have the option to select your Covenant. Covenants are the big system with Shadowlands, so they are very important and central to the story and gameplay. When you select your Covenant, you will gain two abilities. One is specific to the Covenant, so all members of that Covenant have that ability, and one is specific to your class and Covenant, so only members of your class that join that Covenant have that specific ability. You do gain access to these abilities while questing through the zone associated with your Covenant, so you get a little bit of time to test them out before making your choice. If you regret your decision, you are able to switch Covenants. If you've never been part of that specific covenant that you want to switch to, it's very easy, it's instant, it's just a bunch of dialogue options you have to go through to swap. If you have already been part of that covenant and want to swap back to it, you do have to complete a small series of quests, basically filling the bar of doing world quests, dungeons, or uh, activities in a zone. Then you have to wait one weekly reset and do the same thing again, and then you're able to rejoin that covenant that you had previously left. The entire time during this quest chain, you do have access to your old Covenant abilities and soul binds uh, before switching. Still on the topic of Covenants, we have Callings, which you can pick up in your Covenant Sanctum. These are essentially emissary replacements, so you get one per day, and they last for three days before expiring. And they're a mix of doing world quests and zones, or doing a fill the bar type quest where you can fill it by killing rares, or doing dungeons or world quests, so they're a little bit more varied than emissaries. They also reward things like reputation, gear, and a new currency called Anima. Anima is the big general currency of Shadowlands, and it's used for a variety of activities, such as upgrading your Covenant Sanctum, purchasing cosmetics from your Covenant, and sending missions on the new scouting map. Yes, there is a new mission table in Shadowlands, but it's a bit different than what you're used to. So it's more like an auto-battler game instead of how the previous mission tables worked, which was just like you send up to a percent success rate and you just let the mission go uh, and it comes back either successful or as a failure. So it's a little bit more interesting, but people that didn't like the old mission table probably still aren't going to like the new one. In terms of progressing your covenant, this is done through a currency called Renown. This is weekly capped at 3 and players are able to catch up to the current weekly cap. This is gained by completing weekly quests for Anima for your Covenant, as well as rescuing souls from the Maw, and you also get some for completing each chapter of your Covenant campaign. Catch-up mechanics do allow players behind to gain renown through other activities at max level, such as raids, dungeons, PvP, and the previously mentioned callings. Having a higher renown level does things like increasing your world quest die level, unlocking cosmetic rewards for your Covenant, including transmog mounts and pets, and also unlocks your nodes on a new system called Soul Binds. Each Covenant has three Soul Binds unique to that Covenant, all with different tree paths and passive buffs that they offer the player. 
You start with one and you're able to unlock the other two over time through completing things like the Covenant Campaign and increasing your renown. As your renown increases, you unlock these nodes in the Soulbind Tree, which are either Soulbind specific powers or Conduits. Conduits come in three types, Potency, Endurance, or Finesse, and they are class specific with the exception of one that buffs your Covenant ability, so they are the same across all Covenants. The difference is their location in each Soulbind Tree does differ. Conduits have an eye level just like regular gear and drop from all kinds of content with the eye level corresponding to the difficulty of content you are running. They also drop in addition to regular loot drops for things like Mythic Plus and Raids, so they don't take the place of regular drops from those forms of content. Shifting gears from Covenants, let's talk about a zone called the Maw. The Maw is a level 60 only zone full of elites, treasures, and hidden quests similar to Mechagon. As mentioned previously, you do get a weekly quest for Renown to come here and save souls. This is also the only zone in the game where you can earn a currency called Stygia. Stygia is a currency you can use to buy sockets, uh, random conduit upgrades, and cosmetics from a vendor called Venari. Stygia is earned by doing various activities in the mall, including things like killing rares and opening treasures. As you do these activities in the mall, you gain the attention of the Jailer through this mechanic called the Eye of the Jailer. The more you do, the more attention you get, which results in deadlier effects. There are five levels to these effects which get increasingly difficult to manage, from attacks periodically raining down from the sky, to summoning elite mobs to try and kill you. Once you reach the fifth tier, you constantly take damage and are slowed, signifying that your time in the mall, at least for the day, is done. The Eye of the Jailer resets daily so you can always return back the next day back at level zero. As I mentioned, Venari is the vendor that has all the items you can purchase with Stygia. She also has her own reputation, which ranges from dubious all the way up to appreciative. And she sells various things such as teleporters to new regions of the mall, as well as the socket item and conduit upgrades as previously mentioned. So you will want to get her reputation up in order to access those items. Inside the mall, we have Torghast. Torghast is similar to a roguelike or big dungeon crawl. Basically, you work your way up a specific number of floors, gaining a choice of special class-specific or neutral abilities along the way called Anima Powers. These powers only last for that specific Torghast run, so no two runs will be the same. You'll also earn a run-specific currency called Phantasma, which can be used at vendors found throughout your run to purchase more Anima Powers. The tower also gets more dangerous as you progress further up and gains abilities called Torments, which include things like pulsing AoE damage, increased mob health, and more. All this is done to earn cosmetic rewards as well as the legendary item currency called Soul Ash, which is capped at 100 per week. Entry into Torghast is free, so no worrying about grinding out currency for keys. Runs are also not timed, instead you have a limited number of deaths, so you're free to go as slow or as fast as you want. There is some confusing terminology when it comes to Torghast that I'll go over now. First we have floors, these are the areas that you're initially ported into and end with another portal at the end that leads to the next floor. We also have layers, which are groupings of six floors and the duration of a standard Torghast run. These get more difficult the higher you go, and they end in a boss floor. Next we have wings, which are sets of eight layers that all have related enemies, bosses, and environments. There are six different wings, with only two ever being available each week. Each progressive layer in a wing is harder than the last, so the second is harder than the first, third is harder than the second, and so on. To unlock the next layer, you must complete the previous one, so you start only available to play the first layer of a wing, and then must unlock further layers. After you have unlocked further layers, you can always run that level. So say the first week you run up to layer 3 in a wing, the next time that wing is available, you can start at layer 3, and if you do so, you will get all the soul ash from layers 1 and 2 without having to run them. There is also a challenge mode-esque version of Torghast known as the Twisting Corridors. These are a series of three layers, so 18 total floors, that is randomly chosen from the six different wings. You do not earn Soul Ash for these runs. Instead, you can earn cosmetics including a pet, title, and mount. 
The last thing related to Torghast is the Rune Carver himself. He is unlocked early on in the Torghast intro quest line, and this is the person you'll take your materials, legendary recipes, and soul ash to in order to craft your legendary items. In order to do so, you will need four things. First, you need the legendary power recipe. These are obtained from various places including Raid, Torghast, and PvP. Each recipe has a specific source, they are not random drops, and they only drop once the Rune Carver is unlocked, but they do have a 100% drop chance from their respective sources currently. Each recipe can only be put on certain item slots which are designated on the recipe. You will also need a base item. These are items created by crafters so they can be bought from the auction house if you can't make them yourself. On launch, we will have four different ranks, each with increasing eye level. Crafters will have to make a bunch of the previous rank in order to unlock the next, so it will take some time before the higher ranks become available. The third thing you will need is stat scrolls, which are created by scribes and allow you to select the secondary stats on your legendary item. You must use two of these, and you cannot use two of the same stat. The last thing you need, as previously mentioned, is soul ash, which is obtained through running Torghast layers. You need 100 soul ash per rank of the base item, so a rank 1 item needs 100, whereas a rank 4 needs 400. You are able to upgrade your already crafted legendaries if you have a crafted base item of the correct rank and the soul ash difference in order to upgrade it. As of launch, you can only equip one legendary at a time, but this may change over the course of the expansion, just like in Legion. Also, the legendary gear makes up a unique transmog set that looks pretty cool. Moving on to our last new system coming in Shadowlands, we have the Great Vault. This is basically a new weekly chest system that gives you options based on the content that you did from raiding, mythic plus, and PvP. The item level of the reward is based on the difficulty of the content you did, so higher difficulty content rewards better items. Important to note that if you do everything you have 9 options to choose from, but you still only get to select one item each week. I do go a little bit more in depth on how the Mythic Plus interaction works with this system in a previous video I did on Shadowlands Mythic Plus changes, I'll link that in the description if anyone wants to check it out. But that is it for these Shadowlands systems guys. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in entering for a chance to win a free digital copy of Shadowlands, check out the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Warcraft content like it, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my stream on Twitch, or follow me for updates on Twitter, both at Tactics. Thanks once again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.